simple flush. The sound, it means relief. But imagine no toilet paper, no towels, no soap. Now that can mean anxiety. Now, for most, it's a matter of stocking your own bathroom, making sure you're fully equipped for the day. But imagine a world where you don't have to worry about that. Imagine a world where everything's handed to you on a silver platter. Now that is our story today. Today, we are in Los Angeles, California. Kennedy. Hello. David? Yes. David. How are you? Pleasure to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. Uh, hello. Um, Come to the back. Our story is about David Foster. He's originally from North Dakota and has one of the more interesting jobs in the workforce. How's it sound, Brian? Is it sound good? Yeah, it's not, no good? Okay. You know what, actually, is there, um, I don't know if it's gonna work in here, to be honest with you. Do you have another spot that we could go to? But don't you want the display? Um, we'll, we, we'll come back to that. Do you, where, do you, can we move into the living room maybe? Uh, my name is David Foster, and I am a bathroom attendant in the Los Angeles region. You just gonna stand here the whole time? If you want me to leave? David is one of the region's premier bathroom attendants. Style of urinal was developed in the 60s. I think it was in 1962. Name a bathroom, and he's attended it. Looks like I got some extra work to do. I like to say when you walk into a bathroom that I am working in, it is like a jubilee. Of colors, of toiletries, and excitement. But the work is fun, you know, and you make some really good friends doing it. I worked with David Foster for about five years as a bathroom attendant uh, at various bars throughout Hollywood. I hired David on and off. I've, I've been hiring for a while. Yeah, we do, you know, events like all around the whole city and stuff. <laughs> Man, you're, you're awesome, brother. Thank you. Thank you for one extra mile. I like to consider myself not an elitist of the brand of, of attendants, but I take my job very seriously. This is it? This is it. Wow. Yeah. David takes his job so serious, in fact, that he has his own layout set up for us in his home bathroom. After hearing some first-hand testimony, I decided I'd do a little demo with him. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Oh, let me get that for you. Thank you so much. Okay, oh, ah, ah, a little sprinkle here. Thank you. Ah, ah, ah. What is, what is this over here? This. Oh. This is a little bit of a, an aperitif for when people come into the bathroom. Uh, some German potato salad, uh, smoked oysters in a cottonseed oil, and Vienna sausages. He's got the best serving turf that they ever serve at like any of these events. And he's really good. Cheers. Cheers to you. Mmm. I'd have more, but I want the rest of the crew to get some. David prides himself on creating an atmosphere of relaxation, cleanliness, and friendship. What does that smell? It's oh, delightful. that's almond with a little bit of burgundy. Oh, wow. Mm. I wanted the everyday man to feel like every time they walk into a bathroom, it's like walking into Xanadu, a paradise. Going to the bathroom should be an overwhelmingly positive experience because you go in there and you always lose a part of yourself and you should leave gaining something back. At your discretion, sir. Okay, um, I hope it has been a pleasant day. Uh, it, it, it really has, thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. You have a, have a wonderful evening. You enjoy the rest of your life. Thank you. Wow, that was very good. I don't really remember, what is it about, from 
2003 to 2005. It was kind of a blur, you know, could have been a combination of, you know, the uh, ammonium bleach. After you floated around for a bit in Los Angeles, searching for the right job, you finally hit the jackpot, is what you call it. The Beverly Hilton, yes. I had come so far, and for an attendant to get hired there, that's the dream. You can't get in the front because of the strict paparazzi laws. This was it, you know. That, it was my dream. This is my wife, Jody. She wanted me uh, to have job security. And uh, since I got hired at the very prestigious Beverly Hilton, um, I dreamed it was the greatest job I've ever had. And um, I was one in a million to say that I made it. David's dream job was suddenly taken away from him, something that shook him to his very foundation. Can you, can you tell us what happened? It was a private matter, really. Um, I did something because I thought it could save my marriage. Um, it was a mistake, and I am very embarrassed about it. It was found that David took a picture of male genitalia during one of his shifts. His story was that his wife requested to see some of the various sizes. He was fired. Um, it's like, you know, Pete Rose betting him on baseball. It's, it's like Martha Stewart cheating on her taxes, respect. At the time, I thought it was important, but I made myself a promise that I would never do it again. No charges were ever filed, but David was released from his duties, effectively ending his career. I had a bad name in the business, and it was a struggle to find anything. And then I met the angel from above, Kevin Grassman, and that's when he introduced me into the catering business. So, what's up, Kevin? Dude, what the hell is this? I have a rough night. What? Did you get the email? I told you you have to wear the black tie with the apron. When no. you don't have the apron? This is, this is great because uh, you know I, I just love these guys. You know it's, I feel like a family. You know this job, is mostly about networking, and David's good at it. You know, he makes the connections, and he's a good friend of mine. And I, you know, you gotta have a friend in this business, you know, especially when people are trying to steal your cream cheese and uh, crack a recipe. You have to get enough on there so that you can really get the whole, you know. Hey. What, who is that guy over there? What, that's David. And what, what's the, with the TV crew? Kevin hosts these events. I he hires random people. David's one of them, like me. This was supposed to be invite only, and I, I'm really confused right now. I, and who is this guy? I'm Mark. It's celebrations like this, it just brings, you know, brings joy, you know? I uh, got to meet some new interesting people. Charles showed me some, uh, some bar tricks. Mark is a very interesting man. Um, he didn't talk too eloquently, but I, you know, I got the gist of him. The thing is with roses, if you don't, if you don't get head them, they, they, they don't, they don't go back. And you have to have, you have to have the roses grow back. So my mom. Oh, hi. After you started freelancing again, you met someone very special at one of the catering events. Can you tell us about him? Yes, I was at a film producer's house and uh, I met Vincenzo Bispucci. He likes to go by the name Uncle. I met David uh, at a premiere of mine. Now, I'm a, I'm a producer. 
and I had a film called Skinny Cats 5 coming out. It was just a dark time in my life. I was having a lot of stress, and I forgot to take my Metamucil and my fiber that day. I do a lot of fiber therapy. I was struggling, I'll be honest. Uh, I couldn't get it. I couldn't get a good push going. And at that point, I heard him struggling, and it's when I uh, took the initiative to use my meditational practices. <laughs> Turns out he's a bird enthusiast, and uh, which I thought brought out a lot of his sensitivity. Thank God for David. He's my personal accident. Vincenzo was kind enough to sign me to a five-year contract as his personal bathroom attendant. That is amazing. Not, not everyone can hire their own personal attendant. Um, how do guys like Vincenzo hire someone like you? What do, what do they have to do? I'm the money man. I'm the guy with the money. I'm the guy they come to for the, for the films. Uh, I've produced uh, 812 films in my career. Uh, I'm here for the audition. Uh, yeah. Are you Enzo? Vincenzo. We were on a very lean ship. I have this space here where we do all of our auditions. Hi, my name is James, and I'm reading for Skinny Cats 18. All right. I want you to dance. Sorry? Dance. But even after David found himself hired by Vincenzo and back with a steady job, he knew he still had unfinished business left. Ever since his dismissal from the Beverly Hilton, David's been trying to take his fight for representation to the streets. Well, I'm still fighting for the sanitation department to implement a sanitation union um, for the fear that what happened to me could happen to others if they're unprotected. I'm uh, standing here right in front of the uh, um, Los Angeles uh, Sanitation Department. A lovely building. Um, most days there's a lot of traffic, you know, and uh, a busy turnout. I don't know. Uh, today, unfortunately, is a Sunday. But, uh, you know, you've got to keep on fighting. Fighting every day. I've gone to other bathroom attendants, and I'm sad to say I think they're embarrassed about joining a union. Then why do you do it? Hmm? Are you like a cape crusader that you go at night and you do this job that no one knows about? No, I'm proud. It's an American dream to live your dream. Well, my dream is to do what I do best. And this is what I do. I'm glad he took a picture of that man's penis to give it to his wife, Jody. I'm happy he did that. Because without that, we wouldn't be on the cusp of a union. You wouldn't be on the cusp of security, finally. I, I wouldn't care if someone snapped a picture of my dick. I, I'll show it to the world. Uh, as long as my rates don't increase, uh, that's important to me. But, uh, you know, you have to follow your dreams. And I think he, this kid, he's a big dreamer. One is not a large number, but it's a number. David, thank you so much for letting us do this and telling your story. And thank you, Kennedy. I mean, you. thank you for bringing my story into the light. The pleasure is all mine. Vote for the union. It's not only important to me, this election. It's important to every attendant out there. Now, David will be doing speeches all over, so keep a lookout. He's gonna be bringing his fight to your doorstep. Go to our website if you wanna learn more and sign David's petition to continue being a bathroom attendant and have his full rights. Next week, we're gonna be speaking to a cinnamon tester, someone who tests the validity of different spices in our cereals. It's an important issue, so please tune in. For now, I'm Kennedy St. Cloud, and remember guys, keep your head in the clouds.